mysterious, sinister and awe-inspiring. Snakes have scared, beguiled and charmed humans since evolution. In no other land is this fascination with snakes so strong as in India. Nearly 300 species make their home in every corner of this huge country. For millions of Indians, the snake is a god. Folklore and mythology have assigned mysterious and magical powers to them. Though a lot has been written about them, yet they remain among the least understood creatures on earth. Also much maligned. The venomous nature of a small variety of snakes has given a fearsome reputation to the entire species. And much of the fear and awe around the snakes is because of this power to inject a powerful venom into their victims and kill them. Scientists around the world have been working hard to decode and understand the mysteries of the snake world and their venom. Nick Caswell of the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine in the United Kingdom has studied snake venom extensively and is ready to lift the veil on some of its secrets. Snakes are thought to have been on our planet for around 150 million years. And today we think that there are about 3,600 different snake species. This high number suggests that snakes have been very successful. And in fact, we find them on most of the world's major land masses, and they inhabit a wide variety of different habitats. Modern day snakes evolved from primitive burrowing snakes. And for this reason, snakes have relatively poor eyesight and they also have no external ears. While they can detect vibrations, they rely heavily on chemical cues from the environment so that they can detect threats, mates and their prey. And it's for this reason that they tongue flick. They use their tongue to detect these chemical molecules which passes information back to their brains about where these different things are. As well as these interesting sensory adaptations, snakes also often display a variety of warning signals. The hood of a cobra, for example, makes it look much bigger to a potential predator, and this can deter that predator from trying to attack the cobra. But many other snakes have warning signals too, such as the bright colours of coral snakes, or the audible sounds that Russell's vipers and saw scale vipers make to try and deter predators from eating them. Modern day venomous snakes evolved far more recently. Venom is one of the two weapons in the snake's armory, helping it hunt down its prey. Snakes are not unique in having evolved a limbless lifestyle but their elongated bodies without limbs cause some challenges when they're trying to overcome their prey. Snakes have adopted two main strategies to let them catch their prey. One is using the brute force strength of constriction, which some pythons employ to rapidly shut off the blood supply to their prey items, causing them to lose consciousness. The other way that snakes acquire their prey is by using a chemical weapon, that of venom, which they inject a variety of different toxic molecules to incapacitate a prey item so that they can feed on it at their leisure. Only a small number of snakes are venomous. In India there are around 300 different snake species, of which about 40 are venomous in that they're dangerous to people. The big four dangerous snakes of India are the Russell's Viper, the Saw-Scaled Viper, Spectacled Cobra and the Common Crate. The fact of the matter is that these snakes have only a limited amount of venom available at any given time 
and they do not want to waste it on non-prey organisms. So most of the times the bites suffered by humans are defensive in nature and dry, that is without venom. Its instinct on being approached or molested is to retreat or coil up and let out a warning signal to be left alone. It will strike only as a last resort. Despite the bad rap, the cobra doesn't bite most of the times. It first relies on its ability to make a quick getaway to avoid confrontations. But when cornered, the defensive snake sits with its hood spread, looking beautifully dangerous. But in take after slow take, the cobra strikes with its mouth closed, its dangerous toolkit safely sheathed, consistently punching but not biting. The scientists explain that the cobra is reluctant to bite because producing venom demands a lot of energy and no snake in its right mind would want to physically tangle with an animal as deadly as a human. Even the small feisty saw-scaled vipers and the larger fat Russell's vipers are prone to swift departure in most cases. But when they do strike, they open their jaws wide and sink their fangs up to the hilt. The snakes have developed a very sophisticated system of delivering venom into its victim. Both vipers and lapids have two venom glands, one on either side of the head on their upper jaw. And at the back of the gland, a muscle attaches to the gland. And when the snake wants to bite, this muscle contracts and squeezes the gland, and that forces venom from the gland along a thin, narrow duct into the top of the two fangs found at the front of the mouth. These fangs are like hypodermic needles and are a very effective way to deliver a very large amount of venom in a short space of time. Even a tiny amount of this venom can prove fatal. The venom of many viperid snakes, snakes like the Russell's viper and the saw scale viper, typically cause hemotoxicity when they bite people. And this means they interfere with our blood. They interfere by causing us to bleed or by stopping our blood from clotting. Nick uses some of his own blood to explain how deadly it can be. So here we have about 10 millilitres of my blood. And I'm going to add this into this conical flask. And what you'll notice as the blood comes out is that it's a liquid, it's very runny. So if I swill it around, you can see that it moves quite nicely. So what I'm going to do next is take just a drop of venom from the saw scale viper, which is in this jar. I'm going to add that into the blood. And if I mix this around, what you'll see happening almost immediately is that the blood starts to clot. It coagulates and thickens due to the action of the venom. And so if I pour this out into this Petri dish, what you'll see is just exactly what the venom has done to the blood. So the blood has turned into this jelly-like large clot. And here, this is the direct result of the venom toxins activating our blood clotting cascade. And so you can imagine what the venom of this snake could do to you or I if we were bitten by it. Snake venoms are the most complex of all natural venoms and poisons. Nick, who is the first ever scientist to have deciphered the genome of the king cobra, talks about how the snakes and their venom has evolved over the years. Snakes are thought to have been on our planet for around 150 million years. And today we think that there are about 3,600 different snake species. 
this high number suggests that snakes have been very successful. And in fact, we find them on most of the world's major land masses, and they inhabit a wide variety of different habitats. If you imagine that this line is the ancestor of modern day venomous snakes, at a point about 55 million years ago, this ancestor diversified into many different snake families that we find on our planet today. Now before these species separated from each other, ancestors of venomous snakes had a number of different venom toxins already in their venom. And we find those toxins in the venom of both vipers and elapids that are alive today. But since these two groups separated from one another, each has evolved a number of new venom toxins. And it's for this reason that each of these different snakes causes a number of different symptoms in patients when they bite them. Scientists like Nick and their research is helping us understand the behavior of snakes. In countries like India, where humans live alongside snakes, this knowledge will be key to developing a more harmonious coexistence.